Moin Moin and welcome to Ralph's Photo Booth. Yeah, the D7100 of Nikon I showed you in my review and in the comparison between APS-C and full frame sensor. Today I want to show you a little bit more of the D7100, going a little bit more in the depths of the camera, showing some tricks and some nice features, um, which may help you get the best out of the uh, DSLR. So let's start with the dial on the top of the camera and go to the setting scene mode. So you get the scene mode. Yeah, and some of you wondered how to change between the different scene modes. That's very easy. Just turn the dial and when you turn the dial you see the scene mode which is chosen on the top of the screen. And if you turn the, the dial twice there are the different settings you can choose from. Just turn the dial and you see there are the different settings so it's very easy. Even if the info mode is not on just turn the dial twice and you're in the different settings it's very easy. If the uh, info mode is on like this you turn the dial and you're directly into the setting so that's the way it works. Next thing is the effect filter on top of the camera. Just go to the effect filters. The professional photographer don't like these things but I know there are some people who like it and, and they want to play around with it so it's exactly the same like in the scene mode just turn the dial and if you turn the dial you see there's the info mode and um, then you can change between the different settings by the way if, if it doesn't come up uh, uh, directly just press the uh, shutter release button a little bit so then the the different settings will come so the, the camera may be in the sleep mode and if the camera is in the sleep mode the, the um, turning the dial doesn't have an effect so second time and here we are one thing you should recognize if you have uh, things like selective color or stuff like uh, silhouette um, you should know that you can change these effects but only if you're in the live view mode. So go to the live view mode and then if you turn the dial you have the different settings and watch down there where the word effect is. If there's an OK you can press the OK button and then you have the different settings like here is uh, vividness and outlines. You see you can go with a harder outline and uh, change the vividness. If you press OK, it's done. Let's go to another info uh, mode. That's a little bit nicer, so that's nicer. So and you see you have these effect. And one another effect is a miniature effect. Press the OK button. You see these yellow lines here. That's in the middle of the area which is sharp and uh, on top and down below this area isn't uh, sharp it's unsharpened you see the camera says go up and down so you can change the size of the sharp area and if you turn from left to right the button you change the direction from horizontal to uh, vertical so that's what the sign here says press ok and you're done next thing is selective color press OK and you see you have three uh, different selective colors you can ch uh, choose from. See here's the uh, yellow square in the middle. You put the yellow square on the color you would like to select. So let's see if I can do it like the red. It's a little bit difficult to do. See yes, here we are with the uh, red color. Just press the button up and you see here is a red color you see that's it now go to the next field and you can change uh, uh, you can uh, choose another color uh, for selective color so you can choose up to three colors and you can set the intensity so if you go to to the uh, to this area you see if you go to the red again you can change the intensity by going up and down and you see what the result is. Now we have less red, 
Now we have more red and if you press OK, you see uh, it's a little bit difficult to see because I selected too many colors. It was not was not exact enough. Um, uh, it was not exact enough. So um, I have to reset it. You see that's a little bit more brown or it's not really red. So um, yeah, but that's the way it works. You can choose three colors and you can choose the intensity of the three colors. So that's a very nice feature um, where you can uh, manipulate your pictures. Yeah, so this are the effect filters. Um, now let's go to some of the uh, of the settings of the camera. First of all, you have the setting with the uh, 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 exposure area. So if you press the the exposure area button, you see on top of the camera it says it says uh, you have to turn to turn the dial on the back. You have the spot meter, you have the middle area, and you have the whole area. Much easier to change is it on the back of the camera if you press the info mode, because if you press the info mode you will see it's a little bit clearer and a little bit better to see, and then you can set the different settings of the uh, exposure mode, exposure metering. Next thing is the uh, exposure correction. Press the exposure correction and you see you have the value on the back side. You can change from minus, I think it goes down to minus 5 to plus 5. That's the exposure correction. Yes, you can choose from. So that's very easy. Yeah, if you want to change the ISO setting, just press the ISO button and then you have the difference between the front dial. The front dial goes to the the front dial goes to the auto ISO and the back, back dial change the ISO setting. So front dial goes to auto ISO, back dial goes to the ISO setting. So that's very nice to know and if you have the ISO auto setting you can set with the uh, back dial the maximum value of uh, auto ISO. So this is now the maximum value of auto ISO is 3200. If you want to go lower just turn the dial and so the, the maximum of uh, auto ISO is 800 now. Next point quality you can see you see the quality there and um, if you turn the front dial you have the uh, difference between large medium and small picture size if you turn the back dial you can change between fine normal basic and raw plus fine and raw only so you know the difference between the front dial is the size and the um, how, how it um, is stored in uh, JPEG or in RAW. Okay, so let's go to fine and large. That's my setting. Yeah, white balance is, is clear. You press the white balance and you have the auto setting or you have uh, pre-selected. You can set the Kelvin value. So you see that's very nice and in the front you have different auto settings which you can customize by yourself. So that's it. Next point is the dial on top here. We have the different uh, speed. We have the single. Then we go to, it's a little bit difficult, then you go to the continuous low and continuous high. The continuous low value you can set in the menu. Just go to the menu, go to the um, individual custom settings and then you go to the point, I think it's shooting or I'm not quite sure if it is shooting. Let me see. It's... where it is. No, it's not shooting. I think it's in the... Let me see, here we are. CL mode shooting speed. 
Here you set the CL mode shooting speed and you can choose from one frames per second up to six frames per second. I choose uh, three frames per second. So that means if I go to CL, the camera makes three frames per second. Then you have the Q. Q means quiet mode. So the camera is a little bit more quiet when you press the shutter release. I think the difference is not really big, but um, there is a difference. You know, if, I, if, if you hear now, that's the quiet mode. And now go back to the single and noisy mode. It's a little bit it's a little bit sharper. I mean, it's not a big difference, but it, there's a difference. So, and then you have the uh, self timer mode. And then last but not least, you have the M up mode. M up mode means mirror up mode. The mirror up mode um, is useful if you take uh, long exposure pictures or if you take macro photo pictures because the camera needs to be very very firm and steady so um, the, the good thing is if you press the button the shutter release the mirror goes up so there's almost uh, the, the the biggest part of the of the uh, vibration is done and then only the shutter will will go up and um, so that's a little bit less vibration so the work is you press the shutter release, the mirror goes up, you won't see anything through the viewfinder because the mirror is up, and then you press and the picture is taken. So you press, mirror goes up, and then press again, picture is taken. So that's fine for, um, for macro, for long exposure things, um, for everything where you need to have the camera on a tripod and you, you need um, the minimum of vibration. That's mirror up. So let's go to the next point. That's the uh, bracketing. Um, if you always wondered where the bracketing is, the bracketing is here. There's the button for the bracketing and you have the bracketing uh, on the top display, but again, much easier. Press the info button and go to the bracketing on the back side of the camera. There you have the front dial where you can change the step from a third to three steps of uh, f-stop. Let's go to one and on the back dial you can change from three frames to five frames bracketing. So very easy, very easy to change. In the menu you can set if you want to take first the uh, down, normal, up or if you want to have uh, up, normal, down. So that's what you can change. I don't know why, I don't think it's very important, but you can change it so um, it's in the individual settings. Next point is the autofocus and um, here in the autofocus you have different settings. So here is to change between autofocus and manual focus. It's a small lever, you can change between. And if you're on the autofocus, you see there's a button on this lever. And if you press the uh, button, you see the camera gives you the sign. You said autofocus A for auto, and there are some small dots in the autofocus area. So turn the front dial, and you have the setting for the autofocus field. And on the back dial, you have the settings between autofocus single, where the camera makes for the, for the single shot the autofocus. Then you have continuous, where the camera works continuously autofocusing. All the time you press the shutter release uh, slide down, the camera is continuously um, working on the autofocus. And in the last setting, in the A setting, the camera detects by herself if it's useful to uh, work in a single autofocus or in a continuous autofocus. So let's go first to the single autofocus. If you're in the single autofocus, you can uh, choose between one field, one small autofocus field, which you can move around and you can, sorry, wrong, and you can use the auto um, autofocus where the camera uh, detects by herself which of the fields fits perfect. I mean, if you have a uh, if you have a scene which which is real flat where you don't have the big distances, 
this setting is uh, the, the easiest one. If you have um, uh, um, a scene where you have in front a part of the picture and a long way back a part of the picture and you want one, you want the, the close thing uh, to get sharp, you have to use the, um, the uh, one dot area. Um, because you can you can uh, put the the area to the place you want so you can get the the close thing sharp if you are in the uh, if you're in the continuous you have the auto again then you have the single field which you can move around um, um, then you have nine fields I think these are 21 or so fields uh, you have all the whole uh, area and you have the 3D. The 3D means the camera looks uh, at the scene and if the camera recognizes a part in the scene which comes uh, uh, towards you or which moves away from you, the, cameras, and the camera tries to, to calculate where, the, where this part of the scene is uh, in the next moment when the shutter uh, release is pressed. So the camera tries to uh, predict where um, where the sharpness is in the next moment, so to get a to, to get a real um, um, effect out of focus, a real good out of focus. So 3D is always good if you have have you if you have um, uh, parts in your scene which are moving towards you or from uh, away from you. This is uh, the 3D uh, out of focus continuous. So these are the settings and in the settings you can see also in the viewfinder. So if you look through the viewfinder you will, you will recognize there is a frame, a light uh, frame and if you press the uh, autofocus button, um, now I press the autofocus button, you see this camera says now 3D um, and the camera goes now to the full frame autofocus to the single spot out of focus, nine fields. I think these are 21 or 11 fields, I know, or 16, I don't know. Um, and uh, all fields, so you can see which uh, setting you have chosen. And if you have the single field, you can move the single field to a spot where you want, and you can see it through the viewfinder. So that's really nice. But remember, if you are if you are working with uh, the viewfinder, the camera uses the uh, face detection out of focus, and in the face detection out of focus, only the area which is lighted up with this with this um, light uh, box around is the out of focus uh, area. So only this is the out of focus area. If you want to have more, you have to go to the live view because in the live view you have this small square here in the in the on the on the screen and you can move this square at any position you want so the whole frame is uh, out of focus area but it's only the contrast out of focus so it's a slower out of focus it's exact but it's slower question when do you use the this type of autofocus you can use this type of autofocus always if you have a if you have a scene which is very um, quiet which is like a macro which uh, the, you want to take a, a flower or something else so you can move the autofocus point exactly to the position where you want and then press the shutter and it doesn't matter if the camera is very fast or it's a little bit slower in the autofocus because the most important thing is to set the autofocus exactly on the point where you want to set it and that's in the contrast autofocus in the live view possible but it's not possible in the in the face detection because the face detection has only this middle area where the face detection works so the face detection is always good if you have if you have to um, shoot fast if you have fast moving moving objects in the scene or if you want to have a very very fast out of focus then you have to go through the viewfinder but if you want to make a composition like macro mode or anything else you work from a tripod you can use the uh, contrast autofocus with the with the autofocus point where, which you can move around the the whole scene um, so that's the difference between these two autofocus settings. 
So let's go to the manual autofocus. You have to change here to the uh, manual autofocus and on the lens um, to manual autofocus. So now you're on the manual autofocus. Um, if you press the, you have to go a little bit more back, otherwise you won't see it. If you press the, the magnifier button, you see it goes bigger and bigger and bigger. And now you, you just uh, turn the uh, focus ring on the lens and you see here we are and that's it. You can you can just go closer if you want. I think that's the biggest magnification and you can move the area around by just pressing the four wheel button. Um, you see if I go to the four wheel button you see there's the small yellow square in the overview and I can move this square at a position where I want to. So that's also good if you want to manual focus on a macro mode or on a, on a macro scene or on anything else from a tripod. You can, you can go very very close with the magnification and you can set the sharpness very very precise on the point. Just go back with a, with a minus and you're back in the full frame view and the, in the full view. Yeah, so this is a difference between manual focus and autofocus. Um, yeah, these are the most important things. One thing I should show you is the um, is the level meter. Ah, oh, that's nice. Uh, if you have the level meter like this on the on the live view, um, you would like to have the level meter also in the viewfinder. No problem at all. Just go out of the live view, just go to the menu, and then go to the Point controls and then set the assign the FN button. You can also set the preview button, but I do it on the on the FN button. And if you go to the FN button, you can uh, choose between these points. And one of the point is viewfinder virtual horizon. Press OK. So if you are looking now, if you are looking now through the viewfinder, let's look through the viewfinder. Let the camera get sharp and press the FN button. You see there down there's a little mark and if the lines are in the middle there's a the, the black arrow which says yeah you're perfect in the horizon so and if you press the FN button again it's away. So that's a nice feature because uh, you can take pictures through the viewfinder and you have a perfect horizon. Um, I like this very much on the D600. You have a 3D um, level meter which also shows you the, uh, the way uh, of the camera in this direction. Um, the D7100 only has a 2D level meter. Yeah, so this is my short uh, tips and tricks review of the D7100. Hope it helps you a little bit more to understand the camera, uh, to work with the camera and um, hope you find some interest information on my uh, review. Come back again, see some more of my videos on uh, YouTube and uh, go to my uh, internet page. Um, unfortunately only in German, but maybe later on I will do it in English too. So, thanks for watching me and uh, till now, moin moin and bye bye.